Why Bank of America should buy E Trade in 2020. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Dice, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And also, check out our description box to support some of the great stuff we're doing around the country. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so let's jump straight into it. So we're looking at Bank of America. Prince, why do you say this? Where do you get this from? Bank of America, I don't know if y'all remember, Bank of America brought Myrtle Lynch back in 2008 during a financial crisis for $50 billion, right? Myrtle Lynch has a subcategory to it called Myrtle's Edge, which is kind of like their version of E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, or whatnot. That's their, um, you know, that's their version of E-Trade or TD Ameritrade or whatnot, Myrtle's Edge. And I've never really heard people talk about Myrtle's Edge, uh, uh, you know, being on the ground for everyday investors, but I'm pretty sure people use it, right? I know people use it. So here, this is Bank of America's 2018, 2018 10K report. Their client's brokerage assets are $185 million, right? So they are already in this business. When you look at the landscape of online brokers, you got TD Ameritrade up at the top. You got Fidelity, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, then Myrtle's Edge, right? It's number six on the list. Yeah, it's number six on the top ones. We all know that Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade are one now. Next up, you got like E-Trade, then Fidelity, the Interactive Brokers, then Myrtle's Edge. Myrtle's Edge is ran by Bank of America. Bank of America owns Myrtle Lynch. It purchased Myrtle Lynch back in 2008 during a financial crisis. So it owns Myrtle Edge. Bank of America market cap is like 300 something billion dollars. Bank of America, as you can see here, market cap is 316 billion dollars. Then we also Look at his balance sheets from 2018. You know, sitting up in their cash, they have about $177 million. I'm pretty sure he's grown in 2019, but I haven't seen the financial reports for 2019 annual, right? So Bank of America has a lot of cash, has a big market cap. Now, if it purchase E-Trade, E-Trade market cap right now is about $10 billion. So it can purchase all of the shares of E-Trade and increase their online presence, add it into their Myrtle's Edge, Right, you don't have to merge it, just boom, you're already in that online client brokerage accounts, which everybody's going to. That's the future. The future is everybody's kind of going to low cost, low fees, financial advising, and stuff like that. It's pretty much kind of going out the window. Everybody's kind of doing their own thing. That's what the millennials are doing, right? So, this is your opportunity to be able to get in front of the wave and increase your online brokerage clientele by tenfold, right? When you look at the uh, 10K of E-Trade, when you look at the customer assets of E-Trade, right here, it'll tell you $404 billion, $414 billion in 2018. It'll tell you right here, uh, customer assets. Customer assets is an indicator of the value of our relationships with our customer. An increase in general indicates, uh, an, increase, an increase generally indicates that the use of our products and services are expanding. So. Here they are, customers assets, $414 billion sitting in customers assets. You're already in that industry with Myrtle's Edge, who has $185 million, which is pretty small, right? So you have the opportunity to be able to create where the millennials are going for $10 billion in an all-stock purchase plan. But I'm pretty sure you can cut it down because fees are dropped. E-Trade is ripe for picking right now because it's not number one. It's kind of stagnating there with Fidelity or whatnot. But Bank of America, you can move yourself from the sixth position all the way to the number two spot guaranteed in the online broker space if you acquire E-Trade. Bank of America should acquire E-Trade because of uh, E-Trade has a very big, strong online brokerage following. And uh, Bank of America is in that space, but it's lagging. Uh, for the most part, and then E-Trade is kind of in that weird spot because Charles Wild came along, purchased TD Ameritrade. Bank of America can make a very aggressive move by going into what millennials are doing and going into what we're doing into the future and expanding this current platform 
for a measly $10 billion by purchasing E-Trade. That's my thought process. You guys and girls, let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe, I'm out. Thank you. Check out the latest installment of the multi-book series teaching kids about financial literacy. Wesley learns about insurance. Guest starring Broncos Hall of Fame running back Terrell Davis, authored by Prince Dykes, teaching kids the real-life skill sets that matter as they grow older. The third book in the Father-Son Financial Literacy series gives a kid-friendly introduction into the world of insurance. Award-winning and recently stamped by Warren Buffett. Available hardcover, paperback, ebook, and audio online at Amazon, iTunes, Audible, Barnes & Noble, Walmart.com, Tattered Books, and more. Hardcovers are only available at Lulu.com, presented by Alpha One Tax and Wealth and Belco Credit Union.